So hello everyone, my name is Dr Gail Alvarez and I'm from the Telephone Kids Institute at the University of Western Australia. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a study that we recently published looking at adaptive functioning in individuals who've been diagnosed with autism. So we're all probably really familiar with the term high functioning autism. It's a term that was originally coined in the 1980s just to refer to individuals who had an IQ above 70 or who didn't have an intellectual disability. And over time, I think the term has become synonymous with expectations of better functional skills in individuals who have this term, even though that this doesn't actually correspond to actual functional assessments. Um, now, what we wanted to do was actually provide some data to actually look at whether or not IQ was an appropriate proxy or predictor of adaptive functioning skills in individuals with and without intellectual disability. Now, to do this, we looked at data from um, a prospective register called the Western Australian Autism Register. Now, this database holds information um, from clinicians at the time of diagnosis, um, containing clinical data, adaptive functioning, cognitive scores, and some basic demographics. We looked at individuals um, with and without intellectual disability, about 2,000, um, and compared them on their adaptive functioning scores in IQ. Now, the main message of the paper is that um, for individuals who didn't have an intellectual disability, adaptive functioning scores were actually far lower than what their IQ scores actually would have predicted. And for those who did have an intellectual disability, their IQ scores and adaptive functioning scores were about the same. Now, what this data really tells us is that IQ scores are not a good proxy for adaptive functioning skills in individuals at the time of diagnosis, particularly for those who don't have an intellectual disability. And what we do think this data tells us is that we should be doing functional assessments at the time of diagnosis and advocating for funding and services to be able to provide functional supports for those who do need those. Um, and we also think that um, the term high functioning autism is probably something that we should stop using. It doesn't actually reflect someone's functional skills. Um, and instead, maybe we should be describing individuals based on their unique strengths and challenges. Now, if you're interested in this research, please feel free to have a, link, um, have a look at the website that we'll link you to at the end of this video.